Hey you guys, this is Craig from RBA Vapor Store. Uh, I'm going to do another little how-to video for you guys on uh, how to loosen up your pin on the Overdose uh, and or Pegasus. Uh, they're very similar in the way that the floating pin is designed on these. Uh, the Panzer is designed similar to these. Um, it's up the Panzer. I made a video on the Panzer too. Uh, the Panzer, the floating pin has a step on it so um, basically I used a file to uh, kind of make the diameter diameter a little bit smaller on these I'm going to use a piece of sandpaper because they're flat okay that's mojo by the way I guess you want it to be in the video um, okay so I'm going to show you guys I'm going to this is the overdose and uh, I'm going to take my atomizer off this one uh, works pretty good so basically I'm going to take the top cap off here and I'm going to show you guys this is the floating pin and I'm just going to pull this thing right out okay now I had already loosened this one up prior and if you look here on the overdose you can see on the very end where it makes connection with the atomizer it has a nipple on here okay so we're gonna put that nipple on there to use but what I'm gonna do is first and here's a here's another overdose and the pin seems to be pretty tight on this one so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the pin out and I'm going to loosen it up I'm gonna show you guys how to do it the Pegasus is very similar except it's a little bit more tricky because the the Pegasus on the contact pin, it does not have a nipple on there that is uh, at all significant. It is a lot smaller, um, so you really can't chuck that one up in a drill so you could sand it down. You might be able to. I tried it and I couldn't, so I came up with another way. And I will show you guys in a second. Okay, we are going to take this floating pin out um, and I already tried it okay this floating pin is tight okay I can't pull it out it's tight okay so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tap it out with a four millimeter machine screw okay this is a four millimeter machine screw I got this at the hardware store. It was 50 cents. Uh, this one has a Phillips head on it. Uh, they come in hex heads. Uh, I would get, don't get the stainless ones, just get the cheaper ones because uh, you, you don't need a stainless one. And on some of the other uh, how to videos, I actually chopped the head off and use that to my advantage. So here's what I'm gonna, gonna do I'm gonna just kind of file this with a file so that I take the sharp edge off just so I don't mark up my pin and I'm gonna I'm gonna knock this pin out I know that these are tight so I'm gonna give it I'm gonna give it a whack okay so here we go okay good so I knocked the pin out you have to use a four millimeter uh, machine screw on there. Technically, you could use a 3 16 uh, wooden dowel, but uh, I have had a little bit better success with the machine screw. It's just a little bit more solid. Uh, if you look here, I did not do any damage to that. It looks pretty good. Okay, no, it didn't mark it up at all. So, here's what we're going to do. We're just going to chuck this up on that nipple in the drill, and we are going to sand it down. Okay, so.
Okay, so there you go. Look at that. Okay, it spins pretty nicely. So what I'm going to do is you can take a piece of sandpaper. This is actually emery cloth. Uh, I just ripped a little piece off of a bigger piece. Um, and all I'm going to do is I'm going to spin it in a drill, and I'm going to sand it down and fit it in the insulator until it slides nicely. So let me try this here. Okay, I'm going to turn this drill on the other way. You have to make sure that it is chucked up enough and your drill is charged up enough. This drill, I don't know if it's charged up 100%. So, we're going to sand this sucker down. And I know this one was pretty tight, so I'm going to sand. I'm going to try and sand quite a bit of it off. You could really measure it first. Get your digital calipers out. Um, now one of my other video videos I was showing you guys about these. These you can get uh, at, for $10 shipped on eBay. Uh, get the metal ones. Don't get those carbon ones. Those are junk. Get the metal ones. I'm gonna, I could, you could measure it if you want. This measures 8 millimeters right on the dot. Okay. And I didn't measure it first. I'm not sure how much I took off. So I'm just going to try it in here, okay, it's going on here about halfway. So I'm going to take a little bit more off, try and pull that back out, it's still a little tight. You don't want to take too much off to start out with. And I'm not being too careful here because this is a video and I want to kind of get it done quick. I don't want to waste all your time. Okay, let's try it in there now. Slides a lot better. All right. Okay, we're going to leave it like that. You guys can adjust it the way you want. Okay, pull this out of here. Okay, so that was about all I had to do. And what I'm thinking is that this is going to fit pretty good. Okay. You cannot... You cannot... Okay, see, there you go. That looks pretty good to me. It's a little tight, but I'm not going to mess with it too much uh, on the video here. Uh, I will look for my atomizer. So when I screw my atomizer down, and we'll check this out and make sure that it works properly. Okay, it hits my floating pin about there, and I'm just going to screw it down until it actually bottoms out flush and makes contact. Okay, let me see here. I want to take my atomizer back off. I want to make sure that that is pushed up all the way. Okay, there we go. It wasn't pushed up all the way. So I'm going to push it up. I pushed it up all the way. And I'm going to feel it hit. I don't know if you can see that gap. And there's a little gap. And I'm just going to screw it down all the way until it bottoms out. Okay, so there. It actually worked. I sanded it down a little bit, and it seems to work fine. That was a pretty quick fix. Uh, I don't know if that was even five minutes. Okay, here's the deal with these, you guys. On the other ones, on the Panzers, it has a standard metric thread. Okay, this, and I'll measure this thread right here. This thread is... It's a four, okay? Now, four millimeter, a four, a standard four millimeter thread is four by 0.7. Okay, this one is a special fine thread. It's the same way on the Pegasus. Uh, these are both made by Vapetech. Uh, the Pegasus 
and the overdose both have a 4 by 0.5 thread. That's a special thread. It does not exist in the United States. So you can't, on my other video, what I did was I took a machine screw like this, I chopped the head off, I screwed the floating pin on the end of the machine screw, and then I chucked up the end that I cut off in the drill, and then that's how I sanded it. Okay, so that's what I wanted to do with the Pegasus, since the Pegasus does not have a big enough nipple for me to chuck up on. Okay, I cannot, that's a very small little nipple. The overdose has a bigger nipple. I can grab that in the drill and sand it. The Pegasus, I can't. So, since this is a special thread, I was racking my brain. Um, like I said in my last video, I'm a tool and die maker, so I work with this kind of stuff every day. I was racking my brain trying to figure out, first of all, I looked all over for a screw with that thread, a 4x.5. They're all 4x.7. I could not find one. I know guys that have tried to find them. They don't exist in the U.S. I'm not even sure how uh, available they are in Europe uh, or China. So I racked my brain trying to figure it out, and I came up with a pretty good way. Basically what this is, it is a 10-gauge coated wire that you get at any hardware store. I got this at 8th Hardware. This is 10-gauge coated wire. Just got the normal coating on here. This is the solid wire though, and you can see that this is real stiff. The stranded wire, you know, is your normal wire like you do, you know, hook up your speakers. That's stranded, you, you know, it's kind of flimsy. So I decided to go with a solid, this is a solid copper wire with the coating on here. Okay, I measured it, and I can measure it here. Uh, you guys don't have to measure it, you could just try it. Okay, this is a, almost four millimeters, okay. So basically what I'm going to do here is I am going to take the floating pin. This is on the Pegasus. You can also do this on the overdose. It will work if you don't want to uh, chuck up your, your floating pin in the drill. You can do it this way instead. Okay, this is the Pegasus floating pin, like I said, with the shorter nipple. So here's what you're going to do. You're going to take this 10 gauge coated wire, solid coated wire. You can get it in any hardware store. You're going to chop off a piece about an inch and a half long. Okay, I'm going to chop this off. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take my floating pin and I'm going to self thread it onto the wire. Okay, it's basically it's a coating on here, so it's soft. I'm going to screw it on. And it's going to self-thread onto this wire. Okay, I can even take this, if I want to hold it a little bit better, I can take it and put it in the drill and chuck this up. You kind of want it, you could bend it, you know, bend it a little straight so it's not wobbling around on you. But here, I just want to hold it for right now. And I'm going to self-thread this on. I might have to push it on there. It's not in there too tight. Tighten it up a little bit. And I'm going to just self-thread that onto the wire. Okay. This is the Pegasus floating pin. You can do this with the overdose floating pin also if you don't want to chuck it up on the nipple. Okay, let me loosen this up a little bit. Put it in there. Well, actually, my wire, I could probably cut my wire off. I can't fit it into the drill as far as I would like to. I'm going to cut a little bit more off of there. And I'm going to chuck this up, chuck up the wire in the drill. Okay, it's a little wobbly on there, but I'm going to, you can bend it or kind of fool with it a little bit to get it to spin a little bit more centri centrically. Okay, now if you look at that, that's that's spinning pretty good on there. 
So basically all I would do, and this one I already fitted, and I sold out of these uh, Pegasus so fast. The, I, I sold 50 of them in four days. Uh, they seem to be really, really popular. I know a lot of you guys got them. So basically that's all I did. I took a 10-gauge wire, a 10-gauge solid coated wire that I got from Ace Hardware. It's like 60 cents a foot. Okay, it's on the big rolls. You guys, uh, when you go into the hardware store or Menards or Home Depot, you see all the rolls of wire in the electrical section, and you just find the solid, and you'll know it because it's it's stiff. It's not flimsy. You know, say it on there. You'll find a 10 gauge. Bring your cap with you if you want to knock the floating pin out first. Bring your floating pin with you, and you know, try it on there. See if you can self-thread it on, you know, make sure you get the right wire. Um, like I said, that's 10 gauge. Cut a piece off an inch long. You're going to self-thread it on. Chuck it up in a drill. And just like I did with the other one, you're just going to take some sandpaper and you're going to sand it. Okay. You're going to sand it down a little bit until you fit it. And like I said, this one is already fitted into the insulator okay so i'm gonna you can see that that's it it's on there it's on there good it's not spinning it's self-threaded on there just perfectly i'm gonna unscrew it now you're not gonna hurt your threads at all by doing it because the coating is is uh it's just gonna kind of take the shape of the floating pin threads okay now i'll screw the adjustment pin back on there and you'll see that I didn't do any harm to the threads it worked really good and you know this is how I fitted this one uh, I can put it in the insulator here and just kind of push it down push it down with my finger and it doesn't fall out so that's how I did it all you need is a drill piece of 10 gauge coated solid coated wire uh, pair of needle nose or side cutters or whatever you want to cut your wire uh, if you want to if you want to file um, and a hammer take the hammer to knock your pin out a four millimeter machine screw don't use a bigger machine screw than four millimeter and the reason that I say this is because and I'll show you here We'll see if I can pull this pin out. Four millimeter fits through real good. Okay. Now, I don't want you guys to damage the insulator. Let me see. Now, here's a five. And a five, it does fit through. It's close, though. You know, I don't want you guys to damage your insulator. So, I used a four. I just want to make sure that it goes through. So, um, there you go. Four millimeter machine screw, 10 gauge solid coated wire. Okay, this is copper wire. And I think that's about it. I think I can end the video here. Uh, I don't like to make super long videos, um, but hopefully that will be able to help you guys out. And uh, thanks for watching. Don't forget my website is rbavapor.com. Uh, I'm Craig from RBA Vapor Store, and uh, good luck. Thank you.